Thank you for joining us. I'm here with the prosecutors and investigators who have worked diligently on the investigation of criminal attempts to interfere in the administration of Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Today, based on information developed by that investigation, a Fulton County grand jury returned a true bill of indictment, charging 19 individuals with violations of Georgia law arising from a criminal conspiracy to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in this state. The indictment includes 41 felony counts and is 97 pages long. Please remember that everyone charged in this bill of indictment is presumed innocent. Specifically, the indictment brings felony charges against Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Mark Randall Meadows, John Cheeseboro, Jeffrey Clark, Jenna Lynn Ellis, Ray Stallings Smith III, Robert David Cheely, Michael A. Roman, David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tresher Steele, Stephen Cliffguard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Travion C. Cootie, Sydney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Austin Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton, also known as Emily Misty Hayes. Every individual charged in the indictment is charged with one count of violating Georgia's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act through participation in a criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere to accomplish the illegal goal of allowing Donald J. Trump to seize the presidential term of office beginning on January 20th, 21. Specifically, the participants in association took various actions in Georgia and elsewhere to block the counting of the votes of the presidential electors who were certified as the winners of Georgia's 2020 general election. As you examine the indictment, you will see acts that are identified as overt acts and those that are identified as predicate acts, sometimes called acts of racketeering activity. Overt acts are not necessarily crimes under Georgia law in isolation but are alleged to be acts taken in furtherance of the conspiracy. Many occurred in Georgia and some occurred in other jurisdictions and are included because the grand jury believes they were part of the illegal effort to overturn the results of Georgia's 2020 presidential election. The acts identified as predicate acts or acts of racketeering activity are crimes that are alleged to have been committed in furtherance of the criminal enterprise. Acts of racketeering activity are also charged as separate counts in the indictment against those who are alleged to have committed them. All elections in our nation are administered by these states, which are given the responsibility of ensuring a fair process and an accurate counting of the votes. That includes elections for presidential electors, Congress, state officials, and local offices. The state's role in this process is essential to the functioning of our democracy. Georgia, like every state, 
has laws that allow those who believe that results of an election are wrong, whether because of intentional wrongdoing or unintentional error, to challenge those results in our state courts. The indictment alleges that rather than abide, abide by Georgia's legal process for election challenges, the defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election result. Subsequent to the indictment, as is the normal process in Georgia law, the, the grand jury issued arrest warrants for those who are charged. I am giving the defendants the opportunity to voluntarily surrender no later than noon on Friday, the 25th day of August, 2023. I remind everyone here that an indictment is only a series of allegations based on a grand jury's determination of probable cause to support the charges. It is now the duty of my office to prove these charges in the indictment beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. I would like to take a moment to thank, thank the Superior Court Clerk, Shay Alexander, and her staff for staying late and making sure that this indictment was processed. I would also like to thank the men and women of Sheriff Labatt's office for keeping the courthouse open, but most importantly for keeping us safe over the weeks and months that have led up to this indictment and for what I know they will continue to do to keep us safe. We also want to thank the Atlanta Police Department and other law enforcement partners who have worked with the sheriff to keep us safe. I will now take a very limited number of questions prior uh, to going to sleep. The RICO charges has time that you have to serve, so it is not a probated sentence. Madam District Attorney, what's the timetable for the trial? What is the timetable for the trial? Yes. As you know, in this jurisdiction, trials are set by the judges, um, and so it will be the judge that sets the date of the trial. This office will be su submitting a proposed scheduling order within this week. However, that will totally be at the discretion of the judge. I don't have any desire to be first or last. I want to try him and be respectful for our sovereign states. Um, we do want to move this case along, and so we will be asking for a proposed order that occurs a trial date within the next six months. Madam District Attorney, um, there was earlier today there was a fictitious document, according to the Fulton County Clerk's Office, that was circulated online with charges against former President Donald Trump. Those, that fictitious document, uh, match exactly the charges that we now see in this indictment. Can you tell us more about that document, Lee? Uh, because now you have the former president's lawyers who are saying this is emblematic of a serious problem with your office. No, I can't tell you anything about um, what you refer to. What I can tell you is that we had a grand jury here in Fulton County. They deliberated till almost 8 o'clock, if not right after 8 o'clock. An indictment was returned. It was true billed, and you now have an indictment. Um, I am not an expert on clerk's duties um, or even administrative duties. I wouldn't know how to work that system, and so I'm not going to speculate. Next question. Do I intend to try the 19 defendants in this indictment together? Yes. And have you had any contact with the special counsel about the overlap between this indictment and the federal indictment? I'm not going to discuss our investigation at this time. Ma'am, we're entering. What do you make of the arguments made by former President Trump that this is a politically motivated I make decisions in this office based on the facts and the law. Um, the law is completely nonpartisan. That's how decisions are made in every case. To date, this office has indicted, since I've been sitting as a district attorney, over 12,000 cases. This is the 11th RICO indictment. We followed the same process. We look at the facts, we look at the law, and we bring charges. Have there been conversations about the 
Have you tried this case yourself? Have the jury been cleared? Sit down. 